On 1st of April 2005, Peel acquired 4 million of sales equity shares, paying $4.5 cash, at which the retaining earnings of seal were 8.4. The market price of each seal share at the date of acquisition was $4 each. And we're given the financial statement as at 31st of March 2008. So look at the first paragraph. We know the date of acquisition. Remember, said the first step because we're going to use our seven steps, five steps to solve this question. So the first thing in our seven steps is to draw the structure. So we have seal being acquired by peel. So we should actually put peel on top. So peel acquired seal on 1st of April 2005. That transaction took place. And what percentage did he acquire? We need to find out because it needs to be part of the structure that we are trying. So he acquired 4 million shares of seal. So how many shares does this guy have? So look at his statement of financial position. The equity shares is one dollar each for both company, and equity capital is five million for sale. So, which means the total number of shares must have been total number of shares of sale must have been five million dollars divided by one, because every share has a nominal value of one. You can see it's given sometimes can be 0 0.5 so if it's 0 0.5 you divide by 0 0.5 if it's 2 you divide by 2 but the question will tell the nominal value of the share so which means they have total of 5 million shares right so we have 5 million shares total so if this guy acquired 4 million shares the percentage is 4 over 5 and that's 80 percent so which means this guy actually acquired 80% of seal on that date. So we we'll get our structure right. But before we go into step two, so this is step one out of our seven. Remember, we are going to use our seven by five. That's our structure, seven by five. Seven steps, five steps, right? Let's finish reading the question. So we have the financial statement. Then we have other information. The following information is relevant. The first one says, included in the land and buildings of seal is a large area of development land carried at its cost of $5 million. Its fair value at the date seal was acquired was $7 million, and by 31st of December 2008, this had risen to 8.5. The group valuation policy for development land is that it should be carried at fair value and not depreciated. So you see, for every note you read, you need to think about what are they trying to tell you. So this note is talking about fair value adjustment because they are telling us that in the financial statement that we have above, land has been carried at a cost of $5 million. And on acquisition date, when seed was acquired, that land should have been at fair value of $7 million. And you remember the rule one on adjustment is to remeasure all asset and liability at fair value. So which means there will be an acquisition adjustment there of about two million. We will get there, and even at reporting date, it has even gone up to eight point five. But whether we adjust depends on the policy of the company. If it's measured at cost, then we will not do further adjustment to make it eight point five. We we'll stay at seven, which was the value at acquisition date. However, see the last statement. The group valuation policy for development land is that it should be carried at fair value and not depreciated. So which means even our, our reporting date, we need to carry that land at 8.5. For that point, note two. Said also, at the date of sales acquisition, the PPE included a plan that had fair value of $4 million 
dollars in excess of its current value that is another fair value adjustment for non-current asset however this time around this is a depreciable asset so you know what we need to do when we get them but this plan had a remaining life of five years you see they've given us the remaining useful life so that we can depreciate the group calculates depreciation on a straight line basis the fair value of sales other net asset approximated to their current amount so those are the two major fair value adjustments we're going to see land and the ppe note three now says the balance on the current account of the parent and subsidiary included in receivables and payables was agreed at two forty thousand dollars on the reporting date that is intercompany transactions but this time around the balance sheet side note four an impairment test was done on that date which is a reporting date and there was a conclusion that goodwill was impaired by 1.5 million dollars you are required to calculate ordinary adjustment but eventually prepare a consolidated statement of financial position on that reporting date assuming that non-current non-controlling interest nci is measured using the fair value method that is the question so now we need to follow us seven by five seven by five the first one we've done which is the structure remember we follow our steps what is number two once we finish the structure the second step is to calculate the consideration so which means you need to add up all the payment whether it's deferred whether it's contingent everything together but we are looking in this question the consideration is just in form of cash because they paid 4.5 million Sorry, four point five dollar per share. So, which means the total consideration is four million shares that he acquired, multiplied by four point five million for each share, and that will give us four times four point five, and that is eighteen million dollars. So he paid eighteen million dollars. Then we'll go to step three, which is to calculate the net assets on acquisition date. Remember, very important on acquisition date. And this is always very important because if you don't do this, you might get things mixed up. Take it step by step. Don't rush yourself. This will help you a long way. Now, net asset on acquisition. How do we get that? We know that net asset on acquisition is a combination of share capital and returns because that is all we have in equity. Remember, net asset. Is the same thing as equity so invariably what we need to do is to try and estimate what equity of sale would have been on acquisition date and combination in this question all this guy has in his equity is just the share capital and return earnings and share capital is the same which is five million that will not change because you have not issued any shares after acquisition so it remains five million but what is retained earnings at acquisition and that is where we need to answer some questions if you go back to that question in the first sentence it said at which time the retained earnings of sale were 8.4 so we know it was 8.4 right However, it will not end here because there are adjustments to retain earnings that we need to make on acquisition date because of those fair values. There are two of them on acquisition date. The first one is the land, which went up by 2 million and that's 7 minus 5. And also the PPE that add extra 4 million. That's not 2. So that's another four million, and that's six million. So we have total net asset that will be five plus eight point four plus two plus four, and that will give us nineteen point four million dollars. So this is the net asset that was acquired. Then we'll go to step four. Our step four says calculate the opening NCI. And the opening NCI is strictly 
the proportion that was not acquired, and that is 20%. Multiply by, there are two ways of measuring NCI, either by proportion of net asset, which would have been 20% of 19.4, or fair value of NCI. Remember, this question says, required, prepare this, assuming that NCI is measured at fair value. So we're going to use fair value measurement for NCI, because that is a group policy. So the total number of shares is 5 million, so that is the number of shares of NCI, 20% of 5 million shares. Then each share is valued on acquisition at, I see, at $4 they give us. Yeah. The market price of each sale share at date of acquisition was $4 million. Right. So, excuse me, sorry about that. Times four. And that will give us $4 million. So we know opening NCI is $4 million. Then we'll go to our step five. Step five is to calculate goodwill. And with step two, three, and four, goodwill is made easy because goodwill is equal to the consideration plus opening NCI minus net assets of the subsidiary. And that is almost in step two plus step four minus step three that's what we're saying and that is 18 remember we got 18 on step two step four we got four million and step three we got 19.4 so that's 22 minus 19.4 22 minus 19.4 and that is 2.6 so our goodwill is 2.6 million so we're making good progress then we're going to go to step 6 of our step which is to what do we need to do we need to prepare our templates So let's prepare our template. If you look at this financial statement, it's already there for you just to write it out. So I'm going to shorten it so I don't have to write too much. So I'll start from the non-current asset. Yeah. Remember for group account is now one figure. There's no more fill, peel or seal. So I'll start with land and building. We're going to have property, plant and equipment. We're going to have investment. Goodwill will come. We need to add goodwill. That's the only thing we're going to add to the asset. Then we're going to have the total non current asset. Then we can go to current asset. And here we're going to have inventory, account receivable, cash and bank. And we can have total current asset and we can have total assets right then we'll go into equity we don't have share capital we don't have returns for the group then we can have total equity we have current liability so there's no long-term liability in this question so we only have current liability which is a condition of bank overdraft, account payable, and taxes. And we're going to have total current liability. Then uh, we can have NCI, closing NCI as well. Then we can have equity plus liability plus NCI, which must add up to our total asset. So now we have our template, which is step six. Now, step seven. We don't need to write it because it's about consolidating now, which means we need to fill up our template. And that is how we now go to five steps. Remember, seven by five. So let's go to our five steps. And the first one is to remove investment in subsidiary from the parent financial statement. So that's the first thing we need to do. And we need to cancel it against the five million share capital of the subsidiary as well so 
See, investment in subsidiary is just 18 million from what we have calculated. You can see the constitution is 18 million. So which means we're only going to take away 18 million from 18.5. The remaining 500,000 is for another type of investment. So which means we go to investment column and we need to quickly take care of that. So the investment is going to be just 0 0.5. Or let me put in thousand, so I'll put it as five hundred. Mm -hmm. Only level five hundred eighteen will go, and we'll go to equity five will also go. So the only share capital we're gonna have left would just be the share capital of the parent, which is just ten thousand. Okay, so that's our step one out of that five. Step two of five will be to make necessary adjustments. So remember, the note will always tell you where to make those adjustments. So once you read through your notes, anything that needs adjustment is what you need to deal with first in this question. So if you look at notes one and note two, they require us to make adjustments. Likewise, note three intercompany inter inter intercompany adjustment is also necessary there. So let's start with note one, which is on land. Now this is a reporting date, right? Which means the question is what should be the value of land on the reporting date? Remember when I spoke about adjusting for fair value, because the company has said the measured their asset, their land at fair value. It means at reporting date, that asset should be measured at fair value and not at cost. But note one says that currently it's being carried at 5 million, but the fair value of the land is actually 8.5. So which means if you're going to match land and building together, so we're going to have 22 plus 12, then there will be extra 3.5 because it's currently at 5 instead of 8.5. So there's a difference of 3.5 that needs to be added. And that gives us 37,500 for land. Note 2 also requires an adjustment and that is PPE. But PPE is slightly different because it's a depreciable item asset. Yeah, they said at acquisition, the fair value should have been higher by 4 million. So what this means is that that 4 million will now be depreciated, should have been depreciated. So we need to calculate what is the net book value that needs to be added on our reporting date. So currently, if you look at the financial statement, PPE is 2450. So you have 20. 450 plus 10, 20, 10 to 20. Now, there's additional 4. But that 4 was on acquisition date. What we need to add here is the depreciated value of it because it's a de depreciable asset. So which means that we need to calculate what the net book value will be today. Remember, this acquisition took place on the 1st of April 2005. So we are reporting 2008, so that means three years gone. Yeah, and the remaining useful life of the asset, it told us it's just five years, right? So three years gone out of five, and on a straight line. So which means annual depreciation is four over five, and Three years is gone. So the total depreciation gone is 12 over 5. So if I divide 12 by 5, I have 2.4. So depreciation gone. So it must have been depreciated by 2.4. So which means the net book value left will be equal to 4 minus 2.4. And that is equal to 1.6. So that's the book value that we're going to add here. So that is 1.6 that should go on add. And if we add everything together, so we're going to have 1600 
plus 10 to 20 plus 20 for 50. And I have 32 to 70. 32 to 70. Hope you're following me. Yeah, so we've dealt with that adjustment. Very good. But just to mention, and we'll get there so we don't forget. This depreciation figure, we we'll still need it when we get to return earnings because this must have been charged into the return earnings yeah, post acquisition. And we need to adjust for that. But we'll come to that just to note that down for you. Please take note. Right, I will come back to this. Any other adjustments? Okay, there are more adjustments. Note 3 is talking about intercompany transactions, which is 240, 240. So we need to adjust for that as well. So let's deal with AR and uh, AP. There's adjustment as well. So for AR, when we look at the AR, we have 11,420. 11,420 plus 3,830. And we have to deduct it because remember, any intercompany transaction must be eliminated. So we're going to take it away from both AR and AP. And that will give us 11,420 plus 3,830 minus 240. And that is 15010. So that gives us 15010. And I'm going to do the same thing for AP. That's uh, AP as 3. And that's tax. AP is 17. Yeah. Excuse me. So AP is 17600. Plus seven eight ten minus two fourteen. So seventeen six hundred plus seven eight one zero minus two forty. That's twenty five one seventy. And the last adjustment, which is note four. Is an impairment test that has been done on goodwill, and that is to say, goodwill is now being impaired by 1.5. So, which means we cannot put it here. Uh, goodwill is not what we calculated at acquisition. Remember, this is at acquisition. By reporting date, they told us that there's a cumulative impairment of about 1500. So, goodwill is two. 0.4 minus 1.5 and we'll be left with 1100 2.6 not 2.4 excuse me minus 1.5 yeah Okay, so looks like we are done with all the adjustments and we can now go to step three, which is now to just combine. And life is easy now. In fact, we don't have anything left in NASA to combine because all of them require adjustment and we have to do with items with adjustment first quickly. 37500 plus 32270 plus 500 plus 1100. So I can put that down quickly. At seventy one, three seventy. Then inventory we can just merge it because we are now combining everything. Inventory is nine eight fifty plus six five nine zero, and that will give us sixteen four four zero. Yeah, the next one is cash and bank. Cash and bank is only four ninety that is there. We we'll put it there as uh, four ninety plus zero because the subscriber does not have any cash. And the total current asset will give us plus fifteen zero one zero plus four ninety thirty one nine forty. Then total asset will be that plus seventy one three seventy, which gives one zero three three one zero. So 
So total asset is 103310. That is total asset. And we keep going. Okay. Still merging. Still merging. We'll leave return earnings. We'll come back to that. That is our step four. Um, overdraft. Let's do overdraft. Overdraft, there's nothing there. It's also 0 plus 570. So we're only left with 570. Taxes, taxes, do we have anything in taxes? We have 3 to 70 plus 2, 6, 80. And that will be, let's do it, 3 to 70 plus 2, 6, 80. That's 5, 9, 5, 0. So we can quickly get our current liability, 25, 170, 25. 117 plus 570. That's 31690. Now we are left we are left with step four, which is return earnings, and step five, which is NCI. And we'll be done with our consolidation. Now let's do return earnings. So return earnings calculation. So let's calculate return earnings. How do you calculate return earnings? Remember. Return earnings is always the parent return earnings plus post acquisition profit. Yeah, remember accumulated because it doesn't necessarily have to be within one year, it can be over three, four, five years. So you need to accumulate all the profit after acquisition. And multiply it by the percentage acquire. Yeah. And that is what we want to do now. So the parent return earnings will know it. It's 51840, which is straightforward. The next question is how do we now? We need to get the post acquisition profit. Then multiply it by this percentage, then add it to that. Now let's get into it. First of all, what we know is that at the reporting date, return earnings was 16,580. Maybe then remember, there are a lot of adjustment that needed to be made on that acquisition date. The first one was on the land. So which means land has gone up on auction date by the total is on note one by two million and even went further by another 1.5 million those are the things we're going to be dealing with but let's deal with it one step at a time because i don't want to get you confused at all okay so remember without any adjustment all we could have done is to do 16 580 Where's return earnings here? Minus 8.4. That is what should have given us the post acquisition return earnings. However, we need to adjust for the other things that happen because there are other things that were not properly adjusted for or measured at acquisition. So there are two ways to do this. But this is what I usually advise. You can, if you have this kind of adjustment, the best thing for me, which I always tell my students, is you can do it on the table. If you do it on the table, it makes life easier for you. If you remember in the last examples that I did in uh, my previous video, that I just when I was explaining this, I said if you want to get a return, is you can do acquisition. And reporting date you can do it like that and say what are the things that will be impacted remember on action the land is only two million that will affect the land the land but for reporting date is the total which is 3.5 because it's not depreciated so it's going to carry this two million and the extra 1.5 million right however for the PPE on acquisition date the whole of four million will go in which we actually did because when we're calculating our net asset, if you remember, we made those adjustments. Yeah, these two and four. 
Now you can see the other leg in the retaining is easier. Right? However, on reporting dates, it's not going to be this four because this four has been depreciated. Remember, the four has been depreciated. So which means in as much that we are getting this four million, there's a depreciation of 2.4 million, if you remember, that we calculated. The cumulative why do we do that? Yeah, here. That was a depreciation of 2.4 that we calculated. That depreciation comes to is a debit to return earnings. And so you are left with 1.6 variable here. So which means your closing actually should be 3.5 and one six and sixteen five eighty. So which means that our post acquisition return earnings will now be sixteen five eighty plus three five plus one thousand six hundred minus Return earnings at acquisition, which is eight four. Remember, gonna this eight four was there, then this adjustment also came with it, plus two thousand, plus four thousand. That's the starting point. But in addition to that, there was impairment on goodwill. Well, so we can also. Well, I don't want to book that impairment on goodwill yet because it's a different component of the retainers, but that's going to affect the retainers of the parent directly. I don't want to mix it together, but we'll come to that. Let's get this right first. So, what this means is that the post acquisition profit is actually, so post acquisition profit is actually going to be, let's do it, and 16. 580 plus 3500 plus 1600. So, what you're saying here is post action report, reporting date return is actually 21680. Remember, we started from 16580, which is on the financial statement. Return ends. Yeah. Yeah. And the opening was given to be 8.4. But we need to make those adjustments on the opening as well. So the total opening is actually 8,400 plus 6,000. 6,000 is 2,000 and 4,000, please. So that's 14,400. So the difference between the two is our post acquisition profit, which is what this is trying to speak to. So that is 21,680 minus 14. 400. So post action profit is equal to 7280. So these are post acquisition profit of the subsidiary. But the parent is only entitled to 80% of this. So for parents, which is the group return is one or two, only 80% is entitlement. And that will be equals to times point eight, and that is five eight two four. So this will go to the parent, right? But remember, goodwill has also been impaired. This is not four by one point five, and when there is goodwill impairment, I told you there are two possibilities of treatment depending on how NCI has been measured. If NCI is measured at proportionate of net asset, then impairment goes to the parents fully. However, if NCI is measured at fair value, then NCI will need to share that impairment. So percentage will go to NCI and percentage will go to returns of the parent. So which means 
For this question, the group retained earnings, the comp, group retained earnings will be calculated as the parent retained earnings, which is 51,840. Parent will take his own share of the impairment of goodwill and will always also take the 80% plus 80% of post acquisition profit, which is 80% uh, of 7280. Done that earlier there, so that equals to five one eight forty minus eighty percent of one five as one thousand two hundred plus five eight two four. So that's um fifty one eight forty minus one two hundred. Plus five eight two four, and that gives a total of fifty six. So the group returning is with fifty six four six four, and we're going to plug that there. Fifty six four six four, and that makes equity to be sixty six. Four six four. Now the fifth stage, which is the last stage of consolidate, is to calculate the closing NCI. Closing NCI, and that is now pretty easy with the stage where we find ourselves, because all we have to do is to calculate. The proportion of post acquisition return earnings and add it to the opening NCI. And because there was impairment of goodwill and NCI is measured at fair value, NCI will have to take its own share of that impairment. Yeah, because if you know how to go up with fair value, you must learn how to come down with impairment. Anything that has been fair valued is susceptible to impairment. So that's why NCI must also suffer that. So closing NCI is equals to open NCI, the opening, plus percentage share of acquisition profit, post acquisition profit, minus goodwill impairment at necessary percentage. So the opening NCI, we had it, we got 4 million. Percentage share of acquisition profit will be 20%. Post action profit will go 7 to 80. So we'll put it there. Remember, the print took the 80%. And it's also going to take 20% of impairment. And everything will be the closing NCI. So let's see what that is 20%. Of seven two eighty is one four five six. So we we'll have that, and twenty percent of fifteen hundred is three hundred. So which means we're gonna have four thousand plus one four five six minus three hundred, and that gives us five one five six. So that's our closing NCI. We'll put it here as well. In our balance sheet five one five six so the total is now five one one six plus three one six ninety plus sixty six four sixty four and that gives us one oh three three one zero and you can see this must agree with your total asset.